Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, I'm John, this is Many a True Nerd, and welcome to XCOM Enemy Unknown. Now, XCOM Enemy Unknown is a game about, I think it's about five years old at this point, and when it came out, I completely missed it, and I'm not really sure why. There was no particularly good reason why I missed it, I just never really got around to playing it. Though that is a bit mysterious looking back, because it's kind of everything I really look for and enjoy in a game. It's got roguelike and permanent elements that I always enjoy. It's a strategic, turn-based, tactical combat system, which I always enjoy massively. And, most importantly of all, because there's no manual aiming, as a result, even though this is the PC version, I can play with the controller and none of you get to complain about it because there's no actual manual aiming, so isn't that just flipping marvellous? So yes indeed, this is a classic of a few years back and that's kind of what I like this Friday slot to be for, looking back at those classics like we did Red Dead Redemption fairly recently. So I thought, you know what, let's look at this now. So, X Common Enemy Unknown, let's dive in. By the way, I'm going to need your help with this one because yes, I've uh, literally never played this before. The only thing I've done before is I just kind of loaded up to make sure it ran properly for me and get all the settings set up and then I did the tutorial. So I know the absolute basics of like, you know, how to move characters around and whatever. Other than that, no. No, I know nothing about this game, so I'm going to need your help down in the comments for this one. Speaking of that tutorial, by the way, I have just disabled that so we won't be playing through that again. We'll just be diving straight into the game proper. As for difficulty, I'm just going to favour normal. So yes, indeed, familiar with tactical games, that's me. Challenging but fair, that seems reasonable. Not least as the step up says, experience X com players only. That's pretty much the opposite of me. So yeah, challenging but fair, that seems reasonable. Especially with a game with flipping permadeath. Two possibilities exist. Either we are alone in the universe, or we are not. Both are equally terrifying. Ooh, Arthur C. Clarke. You know, I do find this odd that this always happens in games and films. Like, you know, something crashes out of the sky in a fireball and everyone immediately, like, comes up to it. No! No, you wouldn't. If I was just walking down the street and something smashed into the street in a big fireball and then blew up and there was weird glowy alien technology... No! No, I wouldn't go anywhere near it. And I certainly wouldn't touch it like that bloody idiot did. He deserves to get killed by the aliens, quite frankly. No, I'd be running the other bloody way. Potentially, at most, I'd get to a safe distance then take a photo. But no, 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 no. Who on earth would actually walk towards that thing? And now everyone's being converted into lime-flavoured ice lollies, and really that's what they deserve for being idiots. Never mind, eh? Hello, Commander. In light of the recent extraterrestrial incursion, this Council of Nations has convened to approve the activation of the XCOM project. You have been chosen to lead this initiative to oversee our first and last line of defense. Your efforts will have considerable influence on this planet's future. We urge you to keep that in mind as you proceed. Good luck, Commander. Oh, thanks very much. I'm sure it'll go fine, though. I mean, how dangerous can aliens really be? XCOM Enemy Unknown! I mean, I do find the line about how we're the first and last line of defense quite amusing. Like, okay, fine, I get that it's kind of a cool, badass thing to say, albeit a bit of a cliche at this point in history, but that does also kind of mean that literally there is no line of defense apart from us. If we're first and last, unless there's like a middle one, like we go in first, then if we fail, then they send in like, you know, say, all the armies and police forces of the world, and then we go in like at the end as well, after we've had a bit of a breather, thanks to the police and army buying his time. Like, seriously, are none of the conventional military even going to attempt to deal with the aliens? Is everyone else just basically going to give up? Also, apparently I need to pick a base location. Right, what is that? Oh, hang on. Right, so the continent base makes a change. Got it. Continent bonus. They're in space. Aircraft and aircraft weapons cost 50% less to purchase, build and maintain. Okay, and that is... I was about to say three countries, but no, it looks like there's a whole bunch of other ones just dotted around the um, the Caribbean as well. Okay, Europe is probably quite a few countries. Actually, if it's the big wide lines, possibly... Okay, so it's like, is Spain and France, they're like unique ones, but then like everything east of Germany is deemed to be one country until we hit Russia. That's just a bit harsh to those countries, really. 
Right, laboratories and workshops 50% less to maintain a build. Ooh, sciencey. Asia, future combat, so projects in the foundry. Right, so I'm guessing Europe's better at teching up, and Asia's better at, like, doing... Oh, maybe that's new technology and that's, like, training existing. I've no bloody clue. South America, all topsies and interrogations are completed instantly. Well, unfortunately, I don't know how long that takes normally, so... Okay, that's just weird. Sorry, it's Africa just, like, three countries. Is that South Africa, um, Egypt, and... Oh, that's Nigeria. Pretty sure that's Nigeria there. Fine. And also possibly Madagascar, because the difference between the thin and thick white boundaries is a bit hard to read sometimes. Though I will say, XCOM funding increased by 30%. So yeah, more money, faster interrogations, some form of tech, some other form of tech, or aircraft. I'm liking Europe. I mean, I am based in Europe. That's true. And also laboratories and workshops. Yeah, teching up faster, or rather more easily. That strikes me as a good sort of thing. So go on then, Europe it is, that seems appropriate for me. Off we pop. The next deployment site is in the UK. We've picked up a local broadcast indicating alien activity within a major metropolitan area. We should get down there and eliminate any hostiles. I'm gonna be honest, if it's Glasgow on a Saturday night and there's large amounts of violence and screaming and chaos, that's, that's just normal. That's not actually the alien, sorry. So I guess we just head in, sweep the abduction site, identify threats, neutralize hostile targets. Fine, let's get into not really the training mission, but I guess the first little easy mission to ease you in. Operation Falling Jester. Also, could we have come up with like a better title for literally the first time we're sending X come out on a run out? That's like... Falling Jester. That's not the best name we could have come up with. And down we come into what's apparently Glasgow. <laughs> this is where the aliens decided to land. Like, Hollywood always told us they would totally 100% decide to arrive in New York. No, they came to Glasgow in the end. Also, wait, hang on, hang on. Hang the flip on here. Hang the flip on for a second. I'm sorry, is there just a... Is that a German ambulance in flipping Glasgow? Oh, come on, game. You can do better than that. So, say hello to XCOM. Basically, there's big fog of war around here, so we don't know what's going on all in this part of the world. Somewhere out here, there's some aliens. We need to kill those bastards, but we don't know exactly where they are. We can just see what we can see. Basically, any of my guys, I can just switch between all of them. See, so yeah, we've got these guys right here. I can basically move them to any of these locations. The little shield icons mean, hey, if you basically decide to stay here and take cover here, then you'll be in a bit of cover. That's only a bit of cover. Round here, however, is full cover which is much, much safer. Alternatively, if I want to, I could dash all the way forward. Except I find that a bit odd, because like, actually, I guess if I, hmm. The thing is, you can like take one step over here, and then you can take a second move if you want. So I don't know why you ever dash. Like, okay, first question for the comments, what's the point of dashing rather than just taking like two slow movements? Uh, so what's the safest thing to do around here? Yeah, this looks like a good spot. Should we want to go in this direction? How far is... Th okay, there's not much in this direction. So, where's the safe cover? There's some pretty safe cover around here. Using this here... Ooh, and also a ladder. Everyone likes a ladder. Yeah, we might just want to move just like quietly and safely in this sort of a direction. So we just move you to here as his first move. We're witnessing something never before seen in recorded history. And we've got aliens. So, the aliens are now shuffling into cover themselves. They play by the exact same rules as us. So at this point, basically, I can decide to either take a second move, that will end my turn at that point, or instead, I can do one of my actions that's available. I can simply fire if I think I've got a shot, but on this occasion, I probably don't have much of a shot. I can just go into Overwatch, where basically I just hold where I am, and if any aliens happen to enter my line of sight, I'll take a shot. I'm not sure, like, what line of sight really means. I guess we'll figure that out as we go along. I've got one grenade, that I can actually toss. Actually, you can toss that a fair distance, all things considered. So you can certainly do a fair bit of damage with that, and also it's got a big splash radius on it, which is very, very welcome indeed. Or hunker down, so double the cover bonus and immunity to critical hits, so slight sight radius. If I feel like I'm a bit exposed, might be a safe thing to do. So while I could move forward a little bit further at this point, and yes, I'm assuming the red shield means, hey, while that's technically cover, it's cover that doesn't actually provide you with any cover for the aliens that know you're there. Probably best for me to just basically, now we know there's two aliens on the field, I'll go into Overwatch mode, and we'll move straight on to the next guy. Lovely. So we now know there's a couple of aliens, and they're over on this side. We saw one over here, and then one... 
Where was the other one? There was there was totally another one somewhere, but now I don't know where he is exactly. Ah, this is good. This guy can actually get into full cover over here. The aliens, if they're in. Oh, okay. And that means he now actually has a really, really good bit of cover. And he's potentially got a shot at the aliens. Let's just see what the shot he's got is. So, not that guy. 65% chance of hitting that person right now. Go on then, two thirds, I'll take a shot, because we've got a pretty good shot at that laddie. So, out you come. Boom, boom, boom. And that is one dead alien. Nice, good, good, good. Your weapons appear to self-destruct when the operator dies. We should look closely for any fragments that could be salvaged for our own development programs. Okay, so kill people, their guns can be used to tech up on our side. Lovely. I'm going to move this person over here. I feel like park bench isn't the greatest cover in the world, but it's still flipping do. In fact, actually, I feel like that's sufficiently bad to cover. I might want to move... Actually, no, what's screw it. I'll just overwatch. Overwatch seems like a sensible thing to basically constantly do. Move forward slowly, carefully, and overwatch like mad. And I'm going to move you over here. I'm going to overwatch you as well. Now the aliens are going to get their turn. So we've got one known alien. He's just overwatched. And we've got... Oh, right. Two tried to come in, but because they actually entered my line of sight, my guy took a shot. Though unfortunately, he missed because they were quite a long way away. So that guy now comes forward and also do a little cutscene. Right, I don't know why they just did a little cutscene, but they did a little cutscene. So, now we know we've got one alien over there, and we've got two aliens over here. This guy is in quite a bit of cover. This guy, not such great cover. So possibly, actually, if I go over to... If this guy comes over here... He'll be in good cover, and I suspect he might have a shot at that person, though that person might also take a shot at him. No. Decided against taking a shot. Fine. Let's see if we've got a shot. That's only 25%. That's a 65er, though. I'll take that. And... Okay, got a hit in. It was not a critical. So as a result, that guy, while he's hit, is not dead. It is probably safest that I transfer a second person over there to assist with these particular aliens. Because, yeah, those guys potentially could cause trouble for me. I'm just going to dash this person over here. And unfortunately, that draws out some fire. And does he get a hit in? Okay, that person has taken some damage and is now injured. I need to be really careful with him because he's only got two hit points out of six remaining. So, arguably, was that a mistake? Well, that could have been a mistake. Like, possibly what I should have done is I could have moved that person from here, like, round to this bench and then further away. But, like, until I've played this game a little bit more, I don't really have the ability to say for certain, like, okay, how far is their range realistically going to be? Or so, 45%, 45%, or 45%. And only 25% against you, actually. I could take a 50-50 shot against that guy just to see if I can just... 45% uh, chance to hit... Go on then, take your shot, and nice, good, got lucky on the 50-50 there. I'm a bit concerned about this guy though, because yeah, he's not in great cover, and he's injured. So I might be about to lose someone immediately, so that'd be good, but... <laughs> Welcome to XCOM, that's probably going to happen while I'm learning the game slightly. Right, Novikov. Now potentially, if I could get you into, aha... The thing is, this guy's already fired, so I'm pretty sure because he's already done one Overwatch fire, he can't do any more. So I'm going to move this guy round to here, see if that actually gets us a decent shot at him. 45%. Not great. Okay, back out to running mode, because what I could do is... Ah. Okay, I can actually move him literally into the bus, and that is not the most sensible way to get there. It really isn't, but apparently that's what he wants to... You know what? He is probably not a bad idea. Just... Let's just move him to here, because apparently this guy's decided he can't run around the bus. No! He needs to be a drama queen about it. Right, so he's now in very, very good cover. This guy, meanwhile, can probably move into... This is good cover too. So whatever's going on on this side of the field, I feel better about. So I'm going to... Take a 50-50 shot... Go on then, I'll take a 50-50 shot while I'm... Actually, no, that thing might be about to move. Oh, go on, I'll take a 50-50. And, no, that was a mess. Fine, should have gone for Overwatch there, no matter. Right, back over to the aliens. And I probably need the guy who's in cover to... Oh! Right, that guy has decided to sigh over to that guy. What does that mean? I don't really know. Okay, he's... Ah! Okay, 
He decided to take a shot there. Does that mean he sacrificed his... Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Okay, good. It's back over to me. Right. So what I'm really concerned about at this exact moment in time is this guy. Because right now, this guy is not in good shape. I feel like for safety... In fact, actually, I've only got sight of two of them right now. For safety, what I should probably do is straight up grenade. Because if I use my one grenade over there, that will actually be a good hit against this guy. So yeah, a frag grenade does three damage. That would kill him. And it feels like that doesn't miss. That's just basically a throw where you just decide where it goes. So I'm going to go for that just for safety. So in goes the grenade. Because apparently we're very good at throwing grenades. You may want to instruct your men to exercise restraint when using explosives. While certainly effective at killing aliens, they also destroy the artifacts we're hoping to recover from the bodies. Just something to consider. Good work out there, Strike One. If I may, Commander. The labs are on high alert. Teams are standing by for your orders. We can begin researching the newly recovered artifacts immediately. Right, so explosives are really, really powerful and useful, but they kill aliens in such a way as you get less tech and good stuff out of it. Marvellous. And... I'm pretty happy with how that went. It was a bit dicey there for a second, but Operation Falling Jester, still don't like the name by the way, we have indeed managed to successfully kill four aliens, including, I think were two of them via, no hang on, I think we shot two to death, and then, or were there only three? No, we have killed four aliens, I think we shot two of them to death, and then one of them was blown up, and then another one was psychically linked to the other one. I don't know what that psychic link means exactly, hopefully we'll figure that out soon. Still, that's got to be a good result, really. And back we go to... Where are we based? Are we based in Poland? Oh, apparently we're based in Poland. That's nice. And also, we've painted a little no alien sign on our ship. Lovely. Welcome to XCOM HQ, Commander. I'm Central Officer Bradford. My role in this project is twofold. Providing tactical support for our field operations and keeping you briefed on the current situation. My efforts should allow you to focus on the bigger issues at hand. Speaking of which... We have a soldier waiting for a promotion in the barracks. I'll let you get to it. Aha! Uh -huh. Promoted soldiers. Lovely. And out we zoom to... Ooh, XCOM. Yeah, because XCOM is basically... Ooh, two of them leveled up. Oh, well done, lads. Right, so, yeah, this I understand. So, basic lads are just, like, generic soldiers. After they've gained a tiny bit of experience, they magically become specialists. So, let's look at Novikov. Oh yeah, Novikov, he was the drama queen lad, wasn't he? He was the guy who decided he wanted to jump over the top of the bus rather than just running around the outside of it. Okay, fine, so we will promote you. The heavy weapons specialist provides a crucial service to the squad. With the rocket launcher in tow, there are demolitions experts. Right, so you've just become a heavy. Lovely, so now you get to fire a rocket. That's cool, I like you. And then next time you actually level up, presumably I'll actually get an actual choice between two abilities. So now he is a squaddy heavy. He's gained himself a tiny bit of extra hit points. He's presumably a bit better at aiming as well. And yes, indeed, he can now fire a rocket. So hang on, can it be used after moving? No more than once mission. So once per mission, before he moves, or rather instead of moving, he can just basically fire a massive rocket launcher to do a ton of damage to one given target. Okay, that seems interesting. Presumably as bigger and more heavy aliens will start showing up sooner or later. And Ho Pan has also leveled up on the assault front. The assault class serves as our front line. They're the first ones into a fight, and the last ones out. Okay, so assault, these guys are the guys who are supposed to be at the front. So squaddy for you is allows firing or overwatch after dashing on turn run and gun is activated. Ah, so this guy can basically get a lot further forward then activate overwatch. Cool. But he also, ah, that was the guy who actually took a hit. Okay, so he's wounded and it's going to take six days for him to actually heal up properly. So right now he's on three out of six on the old hit points, but his aim's higher than the other guy, presumably because, like, you know, assaults are more about getting forward and shooting, so that kind of makes sense. Fine. The recovered artifacts are being unloaded and the research team is waiting your orders. We'll get started as soon as you give the order, Commander. So, we picked up six weapon fragments, four sectoid corpses, and we have three new things we could research. Lovely. And now into, aha, presumably now this is the game proper at this point. Ooh, ex-commie nurse. I like this. I like this quite a lot, yes. 
So we've got all this stuff here. Oh, hello! Are you the guys who, like, you know, work for me and, like, blow up the aliens and stuff? There we go. And, yep, those guys just having a drink there. Having a quick bit of exercise. Pretending to play pool, but not actually playing pool. Right, let's get to grips with some basics here. So, we got ourselves a hangar. View and edit all fighter craft owned by XCOM. Okay, so what I've got is, in Europe, I've got a Raven 1 and a Raven 2. When selecting a specific jet within the hangar, you can choose to modify its current weapon loadout to best serve our needs. Okay, so that's a Raven, all right. Edit the loadout. I literally only have one thing, so I probably shouldn't do that right now. So yes, I've got myself a Raven 1 and a Raven 2 in Europe. I've also got... One empty slot in every other continent, but right now I don't actually have anything. Okay, interceptors. What are interceptors? Hang on, do I want some interceptors in North America? So, initial cost, 40. Monthly cost, 20. Hang capacity, 1 out of 4. What exactly do interceptors do? You know what? Because they're fairly cheap and I'm making a surplus of 165 right now, I'm going to order... One interceptor right now in North America, just so North America is safe from whatever we're intercepting. Presumably like alien craft or something. So go on then. I'm going to order one interceptor there. And hopefully that will be like useful for reasons. Meanwhile in the barracks, view my soldiers. Ah yes, so these are the guys who I've been using so far, or rather actually... There's, yeah, three of the guys I've been using so far, and the guy who's wounded goes down to the bottom for the time being. Hello! Yeah, so we can just check your scores there, and look at your abilities and whatnot. Okay, fine. So that's all useful, and your loadout, if we could change it, but I'm guessing we actually can't change that for the time being. Actually, we could, it's just you have two matching sets of body armor. Ah! This is useful, though. Right, your primary weapon. I can either have you with a shotgun or an assault rifle. Well, okay, if you're going to be, like, on the front line or whatever, we'll try you out with a shotgun and we'll see how that does. Right, so this is where we choose armor weapons, secondary weapons, and, like, bonus explosive weapon or whatever. Gotcha. Also, I've just learned that you can basically personalize all these guys, change their names, their appearances, but weirdly not their gender or where they come from. Those are the two things that are locked. So hang on. Hang the flip on here. Hire some rookie soldiers, and oh, sadly you don't get to choose the soldier. That's a shame. But go on then, let's make this all a little bit more personal. Now unfortunately we haven't actually spawned with anyone from the UK. The UK apparently just can't be bothered to contribute to XCOM on this occasion. We're too busy eating crumpets and drinking tea. But, but this guy over here is sort of British, because like at least a quarter of his flag by volume is Britain. So say hello to our new rookie, John Down Under. Unfortunately, there's not really much ability to personalise, so instead John Down Under is simply going to have to be basically Caden Elenko. I figured out one of the faces looked quite a bit like Caden Elenko, so I'm just Caden Elenko, because I like Caden Elenko. France, meanwhile, did contribute someone to XCOM, but unfortunately... It was this bloke, who doesn't look a huge amount like Claire, so we're gonna have to make do with the fact that Germany fortunately contributed a woman. So say hello to Claire French, who admittedly looks nothing like Claire, but she's got red hair, and she's got a vaguely Claire-ish ponytail, and the ponytail partly obscures the German flag that betrays the fact she may not actually be French. And as for our big damn hero, the man who is our heavy hitter, the big solid backbone of the team, you are... what's SQ? Oh, Squaddy. Squaddy, I see. No, 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 no. I think we know what we need to do to you. Not Squaddy Mikhail Novikov. Instead, say hello to Tabby Novikat, who is going to be keeping us safe with her massive rocket launcher. Right, that'll probably do for now. Right, officer training school for, ooh, squad size, which I could afford, but I need to actually level up people fine. So technologies like getting, ah, new recruits straight up to squaddy, more people allowed to be taken out on your squad, are locked beneath different ranks. So basically, I need to rush someone up to a new rank as fast as possible to unlock all of this stuff in the officer training school. Lovely. Meanwhile, in engineering... Ah, Commander. I was wondering when you'd be stopping by. Welcome to engineering. Anything they can dream up in the research labs, we can build it here. Speaking of which, Dr. Valen has just sent us some new schematics. With your approval, we will begin fabrication. Aha, uh -huh, I see. So, research develops new stuff, engineering then has to actually build the thing. Got it. And I've got myself five engineers right now. Build facilities, expand the XCOM base. Ah! We've still got some room to grow up here. But if we really want to expand our facilities, 
We're going to have to start excavating beneath the base. Unfortunately, the deeper we go, the more it's going to cost. I see, so right now we've got a little grid system going on. So we've got an officer training school, we've got a satellite uplink, and an access lift that lets us go down to the next tier down. Or I could just start digging outward. We've already got this effort, actually. Feels like there's a lot of stuff that's already conveniently dug out here. That works for me. Right, build a facility here. What can we actually theoretically build? Not enough engineers on staff to build a satellite uplink. Each satellite uplink is capable of receiving transmissions from two satellites. And if you put it next to a different satellite uplink, that's good. There's adjacency bonus that's got it. But I need power, which I've still got some at the minute. I need 10 engineers to actually make that happen. Fine, so I need more engineers. Or I can build a power generator for plus six power, plus two adjacency. But right now I have 12 spare power. That's not exactly a hurry. Or a thermo generator, 20 power, must be built on steam vents. Except, oh, I've literally got one steam vent. Unless, of course, I might find more as I dig out. I'm not sure. <laughs> Maybe more will become available later. I'm not sure. But I feel like I'm a little bit shortchanged on the old steam vents there. Fine. So, don't need to do that yet. Instead, for the moment, probably need to focus on, yeah, actually getting some engineers in. So, I could buy myself a medikit. 25 needs five engineers to actually make happen. Or... A satellite, advanced reconnaissance satellite modified to detect unique gravitational distortions caused by alien craft in flight. Okay, hang on, what's my current capacity for those? Because I do have a satellite uplink, so no, no, I don't want to actually get rid of that, don't worry. One satellite uplink would allow me to receive two XCOM satellites. Fine, so how many satellites do I have at the minute? I don't flipping know. Ah, built one, so I can totally have a second. Fine, that seems useful. Let's get a satellite in production. Our current satellite uplink facilities are at full capacity. We should build additional uplinks as soon as possible to allow for new satellite deployments. Ah, but the game is flagging I don't have enough upload capacity to actually launch the satellite. Fine, so probably let's hold off that till I get some more flipping satellites in. In which case, Medikit is probably a better idea. Because, yeah, just in case my guys get injured again. So, that seems reasonable. So, if I want to actually have more than... Yeah, go on then. Let's spend 50 on just getting two of them in. Do that. Beautiful. In fact, that's just instantaneous. I've now just got two medkits. Beautiful. So go on then, let's actually get Claire French set up right away. She's no longer going to be carrying around frag grenades, she is going to be carrying around one medikit. Okay, lovely. So you're only allowed max one medikit per soldier. So I can either have grenades times... Well, it says infinite, but I guess it means actually infinite restocks when you get back to base, but only one when you're out there. So you can carry one grenade or one medikit. So Claire now has a medikit, so that's probably a good idea. And let's now head over to say hello to the research lads, because I like research. Hello, Commander. My name is Dr. Farlan. I oversee the research labs. This is where all of XCOM's research and development takes place. We have already begun analyzing the artifacts recovered from our first encounter with the aliens. Based on our preliminary findings, we believe we can use them to develop some new equipment for our soldiers. With your approval, we will begin research immediately. All right. So, ah, wait, I think I saw these. These are the ones that were flagged to me, presumably. So, uh, no research. Our cast haven't actually researched anything yet. Right, new research project. Probably get on with this then. So, in eight days' time for all of this, either we can actually just start trying to contain, capture, and study some aliens. Fine. So, that's probably quite useful. Weapon fragments to make my weapons a bit more powerful, or alien materials to make my, ah, my armor a bit better. Okay, I'm feeling like alien materials, because I don't want my guys dying, especially now they're called John and Claire. So I kind of, especially Tabby as well, Tabby's the most important of all. So probably alien materials to give my guys a bit of extra armor. Armor seems like a good thing. I realize our troops have to put their own survival first, but... Every alien we use explosives against is one less opportunity to recover new artifacts. Okay, thank you for the reminder there. Grenades are good and powerful, but will slow down research. Gotcha. Right, think I've got to grips with the basics of the base there. Let's head over to Mission Control and see what's going on now. So, missions, and we have got ourselves, yep, new interceptors coming in North America, alien materials, I hired a new soldier, I think. They're apparently going to take three days to show up because, you know, the flights are a bit slow right now because everyone's running away from the aliens or something. Uh, I thought, you know, may as well just be fun to have a new person. It only cost me like 10 space dollars. Right, yes, and a council report in 31 days. Ooh, 
I might be about to annoy the flipping council. Right, let's just scan for some activity. Wibbly, 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 woo. Also, I've got a new soldier. Right, we've also got eight introductions. Ignore. <laughs> Screw the end abductions. No one cares about the end abductions. How long just passed, by the way? Is my person, like... Alive and well. Well, screw it. Let's look at the abduction sites. Commander, we've picked up multiple requests for assistance. Abductions in progress are marked on the hollow globe. Okay, so we can try and sort out France, Canada, or South Africa. Okay, right. Ooh, that one's more difficult. Okay. So, ah, it's the reward that's difficult. Got it. And also, ah, the panic. I see. Because it's consonants, isn't it? So Africa's panic level is currently 1 out of 5, as is North America, and as is Europe. But if I were to presumably ignore these guys, then, yeah, there would be trouble. Right, okay. So that would get me 4 engineers, but is somewhat difficult. That would get me money, but is somewhat difficult. Alternatively, this would get me scientists times 4. Okay, you know what? Typically I play these games saying tech is a good idea, teching up is a good idea. So... I'd say, let's head over to France and see if we can help those guys out. Because I'm still getting used to this game, so an easy mission to kick us off probably seems like a good idea. I mean, I wouldn't actually mind getting engineers times four. But actually, I need engineers ten for the next big thing. So four engineers doesn't really help me that much regardless. Um, but scientists four might help me a little bit. So screw it, let's get over to France and just get to grips with the basics a bit better. So, time to actually decide who's actually going. So obviously John Down Under is going, no problem there whatsoever, holding a frag grenade, as is no, 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 no. I think we need to, well actually, let's just, yeah, clear you. How's the, um, the other guy, the guy who actually got himself promoted? He's still a bit wounded. Okay, so I probably don't want to send him straight back in because he's still a bit on the injured side. Fine, uh, so in which case, as we've already got John Down Under, Claire French, and Tabby Novacat actually kind of set to join this thing. Okay, uh, actually, you know what? It's France. We'll let the French guy go along. We'll let Marcel Martin come along to help us out. Marvellous. And yeah, Claire French is indeed holding the medikit, so if someone does get injured, she can actually heal them up. Very, very nice indeed. And if I were to take some upgrades, I'd be able to take more people along, which does seem very bloody useful. I should probably rush to that as quickly as possible. So, if at all possible, then actually get good old Novacat to level up. So make sure we actually remember to fire that bloody rocket as well. Right, let's do this. Off to France we go. Ooh, in our big thing. And apparently, despite the fact we're the first, last, and only line defense, we can only go to one of three places. We're just four people in a bloody plane. So, the Sky Ranger has arrived at the mission site. New soldiers on site one. Interceptor order has arrived at... Oh, that's just events. We've already got two. Fine. Let's begin our assault in Marseille. What are we doing again? I assume we're just blowing up aliens. Let's just shoot some aliens. We've picked up a local broadcast indicating alien activity within a major metropolitan area. We should get down there and eliminate any hostiles. So, alien abduction in progress. Civilians have been cleared. Multiple hostile elements are present. Collateral damage, not a concern. Watch out for ladders and drain pipes. Height advantage is good. Okay, that's good. No, marvellous. Operation, you see, Hidden Star? That's a much better name. Well done. Clearly, we find the person who was coming up with the old stupid mission names and came up with a much better one. Lovely. Let's get in there and murder some aliens. And down we come into France. There better not be any bloody German ambulances, by the way. Ooh. Now everyone's there. Hello, Claire. Hello, John Down Under. <laughs> Everyone out of the bloody thing. Central, this is Big Sky. Strike team is touching down now. Standing by for your orders. Roger, Big Sky. Reading you five by five. Strike one has the green light for deployment. So that's the edge of the mission area. So presumably the alien's going to be... Ooh. A bridge. A bridge in a lower area. If the aliens were in the lower area, we might be able to do some very good work shooting down on them. Yeah, we should totally... Stay up on the bridge. That'd be a very, very good idea. So we're starting over... Yeah, well, I think we're starting over here in front of, a, like, a museum or something. It looked like that. What's... Oh, and there's our... There's our ride. It just kind of stays around. All right, lovely. So, Tabby Novacat. If I want to, what I can do is go straight into... Free aiming fire rocket does six damage, 90% chance to hit, and apparently can hit quite bloody far away. Nice, I'm liking that. That can really kind of hit a long distance. Though, the fact it says 90, not 100 concerns me slightly. And he's also got a grenade. <laughs> Tabby just likes blowing stuff up, damn it. 
Well, just in case anything's about to appear that we might want a rocket launcher, how about someone else actually goes first? Like Marcel Martin? Because I don't actually care that much about him. Ooh, yeah, a phone box. That doesn't strike me as, like, you know, the most secure thing in the world, but apparently it's excellent cover. So go on then, and we've got aliens. Alright, so, aliens have spotted us, too, and they've started moving into cover. Right now, they are in the bridge over there. Uh, do you have any form of shot? 45%. 45%. Okay, as you're an excellent cover right now, probably the best thing you can actually do would be simply, say, go into Overwatch. Because you're an excellent cover and you're at full health and we've got a med kit standing by just in case. Put him into Overwatch mode. Okay, straight over to Tabby Novacat, who probably couldn't get a hit with the big rocket launcher regardless. So, probably best to... Actually, because they've got the range there... Do you want everyone just to move forward? Yeah, let's just move Tabby Novacat over here. Now we know they're over there. That should be a pretty safe place. And you also just go into your Overwatch position there. Lovely. Probably at this point, I'm just going to send everyone forward to... Ah, that's annoying. Okay. Actually, there's some good cover over here. This is not bad. I'm actually going to send... That's John Down Under. I'm going to send John Down Under right over here. He might actually have a... No, sadly, they're out of range, which is a shame. Um, I don't suppose he happens to have a shot with a grenade. No, nowhere near, unfortunately. Fine. Uh, in which case, that's probably a really good spot for you to just go into Overwatch, because you've got a really clean shot at anyone that runs in this direction, and you're an excellent cover yourself. Yeah, that's a really good spot, actually. And in fact, Claire French... Claire can come and join John over here and basically take the same position. Actually, I think this is a good starting point right here. A double overwatch on the high ground. If they move forward, they are going to get themselves shot to ribbons. And taking a shot there does... Ooh, two damage to Marcel immediately. Ouch, that's a bit of a concern. And... Are you also taking shots? Oh, blimey. Right, Marcel is a little bit on the vulnerable side. And in come more people. Right. Two of them are coming up, but they look pretty exposed to me, and... Okay, three people shot at one of them and managed to actually flipping miss. Beautiful. Uh, right, we might just want to blow that person up with a rocket launcher. Oh no, they've decided to naff off. Don't really blame them, to be honest. Right, Marcel Martin is in a bit of difficulty right now. Now, they both... Wait, one of them took a shot, the other one didn't. I might want Marcel Martin to actually fall back a bit here. I'm a bit concerned about Marcel Martin. Like, uh, but that's only half cover. That's actually worse cover. I could have Marcel Martin dash all the way over here into safety and just provide some cover fire. Hmm. <laughs> I mean, or is there any better cover? No. If either of these guys are in Overwatch, that's going to be dangerous. I'd say what he actually probably wants to do is... The problem is if they just keep taking pot shots, sooner or later they're actually going to do something. Right, probably the best thing I can do for him then is... I'm going to actually have him do my first hunk down. So double cover bonus, immunity to criticals, reduces sight radius. That's fine. So, uh, next up, actually, go over to our lad's own. I've just made an error there because these guys aren't in range. They can't just take pot shots. Right, okay. Now, technically, you can just get over here and then take a pot shot at that alien who's over there. Ooh, this could be dangerous. Head over here. Right, into cover. We got ourselves a shot there. 65% chance does up to 4 damage. Okay, what about this guy? Also 65% chance to hit, 60% critical chance. Screw it, this person seems the more dangerous. That's the person that actually took a shot previously at Marcel Martin. So, take the shot. And, come on, come on, come on. That feels like you just got exploded. Nice. All right, the problem is John is now slightly on the exposed side. I'm going to move Claire up to here and keep her in. Well, actually, if I happen to have a shot, no, no targets are in range. Fine, I'll keep her in Overwatch to provide John with some cover. Meanwhile, Tabby Novacat needs to potentially move into... Ah! When it says hunker down, are you actually providing bonus, like, to everything? Right, I'm going to move you over here, Tabby Novacat. I'm going to put you into Overwatch. Provide some cover against anyone who comes back up the stairs. So, this person shuffles forward. And that can't be a good shot, however. 
Uh, unless it is... No, that was actually a kill, even though it feels like it bloody shouldn't have been. But well bloody done to Tabby Novacat there. <laughs> okay, so, the two aliens on the bridge have been cleared out. Probably the best thing we can do right now is just very slowly and cautiously move John down under forward. He just kind of takes cover over there. Can I actually have him finish his turn later? Is that acceptable? Yes, yes he can. He can split up the turns. Good. Good, 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 good. That works for me. Um, in which case... Tab in over cat. You move forward over here. Is there better cover here? Yeah, that's good cover. That's excellent cover. Tabby Novacat, you move forward and just basically you also just overwatch there. Okay. John Down Under could take a sprint over here, but let's not actually there's no need to rush. No need to rush. But actually, I think the one that's left is down underneath. So let's just actually have him move over here. And then ah, he can't overwatch because that was the second move action. Fine. Okay, what we need to do here is, we can move to, ah, wait, hang on. I'm assuming that this means this is the range that if, in theory, Claire were to move into, she would be allowed to heal within that range. Okay, well, that's nice to know. How about you? Actually, you know what? You should just stay at the back. You should just stay at the flipping back here and save the med kit if you can. I'm just going to move Claire one step forward. I'm going to overwatch her. Let's see what the aliens do next. And you just stay where you are and continue overwatching. Now, where's the alien? And several of them immediately pop up and start murdering. Nice. Very nice indeed. That was some good overwatching. Job done. Nice. Okay, I feel like that went a lot smoother on this occasion, albeit it was a little bit dicey for a second, but I'm pretty happy with that, actually. I feel like probably next time we'll be safe going on to a moderate difficulty mission. Give it a go, at least. So, back to base. Obviously not back to Canada, because screw it, we can't be bothered dealing with the other two sites. We just deal with one at a time. Unfortunately, the Earth's only line defense is four people in one plane. And we have got ourselves... Ooh, John Down Under is a sniper. I like the sound of that. And Marcel Martin apparently leveled up, but was wounded. So that's a shame, because... What does support do? I'm guessing support is a support class, John. That would make sense. Just like it sounds, the support class provides that intangible edge our squads need. They make everyone around them better. Training smoke grenade. Deploy smoke grenade once per mission. Smoke confers plus 20 defense to all units, not just allies, though. Last through the enemy turn. Right, that could be very, very useful indeed. Though, does that screw up... Wouldn't that logically screw up, like, my aiming in the smoke? But I guess maybe I've got, like, thermal lenses on my weapons or something. Right, and you also need four days to actually heal up. Got it. So you are now a squaddy with that. Lovely. And John is a sniper, which sounds like the most badass of all classes. So I'm very thrilled to be a sniper. And Claire doesn't get promoted at all because, you know, Claire, whatever. Our snipers specialize in dealing massive amounts of damage from afar. But without sufficient training, they're vulnerable in close combat situations. Right, so John Caden Alenko down under needs to stay at the back and take headshot, which I'm assuming... I mean, he's got to have longer range as a sniper. That makes sense, right? And like the rocket, that's not limited to once per fight. I can just do that every two turns, or rather every three turns. Ooh, I approve of that. Yes! So I've also picked up a whole bunch of weapon fragments and corpses. And, ooh, laboratory. Right, so new facility available. I could actually get a new laboratory. Every laboratory increases research speed by 20%. And again, adjacency plus 10% for every adjacent laboratory. Build facilities to have one of them built. Lovely. So, France is thrilled that we actually saved Marseille. And France is deeply grateful. Lovely. And they rewarded us with four scientists. Which, otherwise, they couldn't be asked to hand over. Because the scientists are too busy doing other things. Other than literally saving the world from being blown up by aliens. However, panic has risen in Africa and North America. So I'll need to keep that in mind next time I choose a mission. We will be in touch, Commander. And also, the council just occasionally calls me just to say, we'll be in touch soon. Uh, which is interesting of them. 
Uh, right, so, what else have we got right now? Counter report in 26 days, uh, two days till, ah, my improved flipping alien materials and improved armour get ready to go. Very, very nice indeed. Actually, let's go over to the barracks, view my soldiers right now, particularly, oh, John down under, you magnificent bastard. Presumably he immediately, like, gets for free, like, uh, yeah, he gets a sniper rifle, good. So he gets one of those immediately, lovely, and his aim is up, and... Can we actually see if I kind of do this? The... Ah! Right. Okay, good. So now I can start understanding the weapons a bit better. Effective range long. Base damage 4. Critical damage 6. Critical chance 25%. Lovely. So they are less accurate the closer the shooter is to the target. Fine. So I want to stay back. The problem is I need to start kind of getting to grips with what long really means on the battlefield. So I don't either be too far away or get too close. Ah, but snipers can't move and fire on the same turn without advanced training, so consider equipping snipers with good pistols so they have a good sidearm so they can fire if they need to when forced to move. Okay, good tip, lovely. So we've got a full strength Tabby Novacat and John Down Under still ready to go as the heavy and the sniper. However, yeah, our assault and our support are wounded two days and four days away. But what I probably want to do, actually, is take out a few more rookies with me, because I want the rookies to actually gain a bit of experience. And rookies are still very capable, they just don't have their specialisation yet. And as they pick up a specialisation, like, the very first time they level up, yeah, actually uh, getting especially, potentially, Roman Soto and Claire French, who have both been out once, out onto a second mission, so they level up, that might be of use, yes. Now, build some facilities here. Now, ah, you see, this slot... I don't really want to build a lab in right now, because if I build a lab right now, then I screw up my ability to get the satellite uplink benefit. So what I probably want to do, and I can't build that right now anyway, because I need more engineers. So, as I've got the scientists, seems- oh, I need to- ah, I should have started that going earlier. Fine. So, probably best just to start opening this. How much is it going to cost to actually get that? Two power and fifty to get down to the next level. As there's a, like an open thing right there, go on then, sure, why not? So the work crews can work on those two things simultaneously. So in five days, I have the ability to build some new stuff. Uh, if I'd known that, I would have started that happening sooner, but no matter. And until that's excavated, I can't excavate over here. But once this is done, I can actually build here immediately. The only reason I don't want to build research here is because yeah, I want the adjacency from satellite up. In fact, actually, once this is done, Satellite, satellite already, satellite, adjacency bonuses everywhere. That strikes me as a good idea, yes. So, really, I want some engineers as soon as possible. Commander, to the Situation Room. Also, the Situation Room is apparently demanding my attention right now. Every member of the Council is going to want satellite coverage, so we should plan our deployments carefully. Ah, I should have probably come to this room earlier. Fine, okay. So, what have we got here? Begin monitoring UFO activity in a new country by expanding the XCOM satellite coverage. Ah, I see. Right, so, view XCOM finances. So right now I'm gaining money every month from all of the members, which is, I think, everyone, pretty much. And I have to pay out for my craft maintenance, three times interceptor, one Sky Ranger. Got you. So right now I'm making a profit. I'm not sure whether profits are necessarily that useful to me, but I guess I do need money to build out the base a bit too. Fine. I can also visit the grey market and sell recovered alien artifacts to council member states. Several members of the council have expressed an interest in acquiring some of the artifacts we've recovered. However, we should be careful in choosing what items we release. The research team may not have discovered their true value yet. Fine, so as this stuff is not yet actually researched properly, let's not sell any of it, especially as it wouldn't even be worth that much. Gotcha. And no one has sent us an urgent request right now. What we do need to be careful of, however, is yeah, the panic level in Canada and in South Africa is pretty bloody high because of that whole incident where aliens came down and abducted their people and we didn't bother showing up because we were too busy just taking care of Europe. Right, can we launch a satellite? I feel like we've only got one satellite up right now, but I swear we've got spare satellites and capacity in something, something, something. Yes, we do indeed have a spare satellite we could toss up. Lovely. Ah, if I launch a satellite over a country, then as a result, the country is all thankful and gives me something. Right, I see. So if I say launch a satellite over the US, that actually gets me a big pile of money per month. Very, very nice indeed. 
And in addition, North America in general decides with one satellite committed to them, they're going to give me one scientist and one engineer per month. Okay, that's kind of nice. Canada wouldn't give me so much money, but presumably that would also help calm them down a little bit right now. Germany's giving me plus 100 a month because I've got a satellite monitoring them. Okay. What about, say, yeah, Africa? So they would give me plus one engineer a month and 80 a month. Well, the US is giving me a scientist and an engineer a month and more money. So I'm sorry to be mercenary about this, but the US is offering me more to keep an eye on them. Ah, wait, the one satellite thing is for the entire continent. Got it. So, yeah, Europe right now has one satellite, so I'm getting plus two scientists per month for free. And that just goes as I invest more in Europe. And also, I'll get a bit of money from the individual country. Got it. I see how that all fits together. What's the Asia benefit? Ooh, that's engineers per month. I did kind of want engineers. Engineers do seem like pretty important right now. Who's willing to pay me quite a lot? Oh, come on, China. You can afford more than 100 a month, all right? Seriously. Screw it. You know what? Having one satellite over the US will actually have 180 a month, which is a lot of money. So I feel like just putting one satellite over the US just feels like common sense at this point. Notice as the US is a little bit annoyed at me because I did admittedly ever so slightly allow Canada to be invaded by aliens. Fine, launch the satellite. That's worth a lot of flipping money. So monthly funding increase, 180 per month. Okay, fine. If launch will have satellite coverage over a third of the countries in North America, get a scientist and engineer. Yeah, go for it. Fine. So that's going to get the US a fair bit calmer. So the US will hopefully stay on site. And in addition, I actually have an interceptor in the US, ready to actually go and like intercept anything that I spot with my satellites. Good, that'll be what that's for. In fact, as we've just been given a big pile of money from the US, let's make sure we keep those guys actually cool with me. So let's go to the hangar, view the ship list, and yeah, North America has the Raven 3. Could I order interceptors? How much does that cost? Okay, 40. Yeah, you know what? Screw it. Boom. Let's actually get ourselves a new interceptor in North America. Let's keep Europe and North America safe for the time being. And then using the money that are oh, monthly plus 325. Yes. And using the money that's coming in by keeping the US safe, I can actually afford to have more satellite uplinks, more satellites and order more interceptors. Ah, you see, I've got a bloody plan here. Right. Mission control. Scan for activity and let a few things finish up, please. And oh. Right. We've got ourselves UFO contact, which I've detected with my satellite. Luckily, it's over Europe. Possibly it's always in your starting area. This is just introducing UFO contact to you. Fine. So we've got a UFO coming in. Coming in over Germany. It's a small UFO. We don't know what class it is. But I've got two interceptors ready to go. So what's going to happen here? Uh, yeah, you know what? We'll launch you. <laughs> Do we know who's flying him, by the way? Because I kind of bit noticed, like, the actual pilot's thing looks a little bit on the, um... Yeah, a little bit on the quiet and empty side. <laughs> deploy an interceptor. Can I deploy both of them? Like, I've got two. Can we send them, like, both out there, please? Yeah, the out bed. they come. And what is all of this? So, contact loss. And we're shooting at each other. Um, it feels like we're taking a lot of damage. And they're not taking much. And... Oh, just. Okay, that was fortunate. I was about to pull out there. Right, so the interceptor shot down the target UFO. The alien crew's moving at the crash site. Interceptor sustained severe damage in the encounter. That's fine. We've got a different interceptor. It'll be all right. Well done, everybody. We have a confirmed kill on bogey 001. I repeat, the UFO is down. I'll copy, over. Solid copy, VD-37. Nice work. Central left. All right, people. Retask Recon Satellite Bravo and get me a visual on that crash site. She's coming into range now, sir. On screen. Magnify. Still in one piece. Commander, I recommend we get a strike team to the crash site immediately. All right, are we going to go and flip an invader UFO? Oh, flipping blimey. And unfortunately, my alien materials are still one day off, though I think some of my team might actually be ready to go momentarily, if we're very, very lucky indeed. I think, yeah, hopefully the Chinese lad, the assault guy, is well enough to crack on here.
But you know, ladies and gentlemen, I would say that is enough for now. Welcome to our new Friday series, XCOM Enemy Unknown. I'm going to be needing your help for this one. <laughs> Seriously, I'm going to need your help and advice and all the rest of it on what's good and what's bad. Because otherwise, I suspect sooner or later, poor John Down Under and Claire French are going to get killed by the aliens. And I don't really want that. So I will keep a very close eye on any of the advice down in the comments, ladies and gentlemen. And hopefully I will see you back here next week. This is going to be every Friday from now on until we manage to deal with this darn alien menace once and for all. But in the meantime, I've been John. This has been many a true nerd. And this has been XCOM Enemy Unknown. Thank you very much and goodbye. We've all learnt a valuable lesson here. When people have the zombie plague, don't allow them into confined spaces with you. We should just actually, like, use cannons. Do we have cannons? Use the cannons! Oh, they've got a big hammer! That's what the noise is! And a pirate's just rammed them! Okay, I think we're, we're in a traffic jam on the sea!